Now joining us now is Devi Sridhar. Uh, Devi Sridhar is here to answer 20 questions on everyday important issues that we face and what we should, should we do uh, with it. Thank you so much for joining us. First question that's come in from uh, viewers. When I come in from outside, say a public place like a market or an office, or I've been in public transport, transport are my clothes and my shoes a source of infection and what should I do with them? Yeah, so the virus does seem to last on clothes and on shoes. So the best advice is to leave your shoes outside because the virus dies within minutes in UV or in heat. And if you're inside, to quickly change your clothes and wash them. Right. Uh, should I not touch door handles in public places? Should I use a piece of disposable paper to touch uh, handles or use part of my clothing like a sleeve or part of a sari? Will that protect me? Yes, definitely. Because one way this virus spreads is that someone who might have the virus touches a doorknob. And then if you're um, quite fast, the next person there to touch it, you could get the virus on your hands. And given how much we use our hands to touch our faces and our eyes, it, you, could, you could get the virus. So the best thing to do is to use gloves or to carry disinfectant or to use a piece of clothing to open the door. Okay, next question. What should I do with shopping bags as I bring them home? Uh, do I use soap and water to wash the bags or use disinfectant? And do I wash the packets inside? Of course, wash all the vegetables and fruit. What do I do basically when I bring back shopping is what people want to know. Yeah, so I think, you know, a, a, a bucket with soapy water um, and then quickly just to wipe through anything that is that you want to take into your kitchen is a good measure. Also, if things are in packets, you can take them out of their packets and throw the packets away and transfer them to containers in the house. And so that saves you having to wash, wash the packets as well. Definitely. Okay. Now, another question. If I've been in a shop and uh, across the counter to talk to somebody who's uh, been serving and later I find that that person across the counter had been infected, what should I do? Well, I think the first thing is to make sure that you, as much as you can, isolate yourself from any family members, especially elderly family members, to see if you develop symptoms over the next few days. And, um, and and to wait and see it all how you if it's not that just because you're around someone you get the virus it's dependent on how long you're around them and if droplets could have been spread from them to you so it's not a guarantee that you'll get it but it's better to be cautious okay so how long should you isolate yourself the current advice is seven to 14 days because there are people who are asymptomatic meaning they can hold the virus not display major symptoms, maybe just have a slight sore throat and pass it on to others. And so the WHO advice is now 14 days. 14 days. When we go out, we leave our mobile phones on tables and other surfaces, surfaces in public places. Do the phones get infected? Do we need to wash or sanitize our phones? Yes. So actually, this virus seems to survive quite a long time on mobile phone surfaces. So the best thing to do is, when you get back home, to just quickly give it a wipe. This virus dies with soap and water, and so just a quick, you know, quick and, and a scrub of your phone once or twice a day should be sufficient. Right, right. So just a damp cloth with soap, and don't obviously dip your phone in water. Uh, so. We know that the coronavirus can affect uh, you through your nose and through your mouth and eyes. So wearing a mask protects your mouth and nose, but people want to know what do we do about eyes? Yeah, this is why masks are more protective of other people than of yourself. So if everyone wears a mask because the way the virus spreads is through coughing, sneezing, talking, then it offers a protective value to others. So a mask won't protect you fully if you're wearing it yourself. If others are wearing it, then we've seen a, a drop in transmission. Right. So is there anything you can do to protect your eyes? Well, I guess wearing glasses, um, wearing sunglasses, this kind of thing. Um, I guess on busy transport, try, I, 
trying to to do those things, but also every, everyone else wearing a mask is probably the best the best mechanism. Now, there's also a lot of confusion and talk about air conditioning. Is it okay to use air conditioning or be in a room which has air conditioning, say, even in a public place? Well, I think this is, we don't have a good answer to this question because we don't yet know if this virus just spreads on short length droplets or can go further with aerosols. What we have learned from the cruise ship experience, the Diamond Princess, is it does seem to spread through ventilation systems. Um, and so it's worth bearing that in mind. Well, that is a, is a worry. It's not conclusive, but it is a, a worry. Okay, uh, there's this question of, do I have immunity if I had coronavirus and I've recovered? Am I still A, infectious? Can I give it to others or can I get it again? Well, the first few studies are coming out and these are taking place in monkeys. And what they've shown is 35 days after clearing of the virus, these monkeys were exposed to the virus again and did not get reinfected and seemed to have some immunity protection. So it's becoming clear that there's likely short-term immunity protection. Now the question is, how long is that going to last? Is it six months, a year, two years? That's the question now. Okay. So I, uh, the other point, if, if I had coronavirus and recovered, can I infect others still after that? No. Once you've tested positive, sorry, once you've tested negative twice, you cannot pass it to others. Okay. Moving on, uh, we all understand that we can't play any contact sports like football or kabaddi and so on. But can, can people go swimming or play tennis or badminton uh, since there's some distance between people there or cricket even or go walking or jogging in the park? Are, is, are those okay? Yeah, so the general rule for all of those is outdoor transmission seems to be very limited. And so if you're jogging outside and keeping space, if you're playing tennis and or cricket and you're keeping space um, and wearing gloves, if you're handling similar balls, it seems very safe. Swimming outdoors as well is safe. I think the problem is inside swimming involves bathrooms, showers, changing areas, um, facilities, and that's where um, it, it, the virus can transmit more easily. Okay, again now, can. Anyone go to the hairdresser or a barber shop? Well, I think you just need to be very careful because hairdressers and barbers see a lot of people. And so the important things to do are to make sure they're wearing a mask, that you have a mask, that your hands are, are you wash your hands afterwards, and then as much as possible, you keep your distance from others in the shop. That's pretty tough. So it is risky, is it? some risk associated with it. It also depends where you're living and the level of transmission in your particular state or district. Okay, now what about going to the dentist? Is that okay? Because there's a lot of close proximity there. Or to see your family doctor, say you're not feeling good about, you know, you've, you've sprained something. Can you go to your doctor or dentist? It's better to go and get care. One of the lessons in the UK so far is that if you tell everyone to stay away from the hospital, that you might miss you know, crucial illnesses where people do need medical care. So the advice is generally to keep going to doctors and dentists, but to make sure that, again, you take the same precautions as other places. And, and these practices will have higher hygiene standards also. Now, as you know, in India, we are beginning to ease restrictions on lockdown. So, uh, People want to know, can I go and visit friends at their home? I think the key thing is if you do decide to visit friends to um, make sure you're not having any symptoms and they're not having any symptoms, so no cough, fever, anyone in their house or in their flat has that either. And also to try to maybe see them outside. That just adds a layer of protection given what we know about this virus. Meet them outside, right. And if you do visit them inside their homes, you must wear a mask and keep social distancing six feet throughout? Yes, I think what we're seeing is for anything where you're quite close, a mask is a good, uh, a good has good protective uh, measure. So uh, people want to know what if they're feeling a little, just a little feverish and they seem to have a cough, uh, but not feeling very unwell, what should they do? 
Well, the first thing to do is to make sure that you isolate yourself so you don't expose anyone else to the virus and monitor your symptoms closely. It, this virus around day four or five is when either people recover from it or they get much worse. And at that point, if you do feel like you're getting much worse, it's important then to um, contact um, your doctor and, and try to see if you could get tested. Um, even before that as well, depending on the policy and the exact state. That's very important, right. Now, what do I do if a person in my neighborhood gets infected with coronavirus, say if the neighbor is just next door, or maybe if, say, the neighbor is, say, 50 yards, 100 yards away? I think the key thing to think about is, have you been around this person in quite a, a close radius, so two meters distance, or have you been farther away? And also, have you shared any similar entrances to the building, um, mailboxes, this kind of thing? So if you think, what we have seen is that in, from a study in Italy, that if you're in the same building in a flat, someone else in a different flat gets the virus, that you could have been exposed to it, where if it's someone outside, you know, quite long way away, it's unlikely. Right. Uh, you may touch something that that person may have touched. Is that what you mean? Yes, exactly. This is off doorknobs, um, mail, mailbox slots, these kind of things. Now, do currency notes, this is a different issue, currency notes like rupees uh, or coins, do they carry the virus? Uh, can a person get infected by touching currency notes and coins or even a bill from a shop? Yes, yeah, so the virus can stay lot active on these. The key thing to do is to always wash your hands afterwards. It all depends on how um, quickly when someone who is infected touches these notes and then how quickly you touch them and then touch your mouth or your nose or your eyes. And so the best thing to do is to be cautious and just wash your hands afterwards or wear gloves when you're handling money. Right, right. Oh, that's that's very, very important, I suppose. Now, interesting. Now, what is... What is the life of a virus on different surfaces? How long does it stay infectious on a surface? So these have been tested in experimental conditions. So there's quite a variance. So outside, the US government research has shown that it lasts just a few minutes. Um, so if you go to a bench where someone else was sitting 10 minutes later, it's very unlikely you would catch the same virus from sitting on that, touching that surface. But then we see it on mobile phones, it seems to last a few days. And then you have other things like packages, um, plastic, um, wood, and this seam in between. So that's the range we have. And it's from a few days on the surface like a mobile phone to a few minutes when it's outside. A few days on a mobile phone. Wow. How long does it last on clothes, the virus? Infectious on clothes. On clothes, the estimate is about a day. But again, these are all done experimentally. So we have to be cautious with how much we, we trust them. Right now, uh, India starting up as you know, interstate travel. So should we begin to travel by train or by bus or plane, or is that still risky? Well, I think the thing to say is that we're still at the start of this pandemic and that this is going to run for quite a long time. The World Health Organization noted yesterday the largest increase, daily increase in the number of cases since the start, over 100,000 in the world. And so you need to be attentive to where are you traveling? Um, what are the hygiene cautions in place? Um, are others wearing masks? And is your journey actually essential? I think right now a general rule is that if it's essential travel, it's you know fine to go ahead as long as you're cautious, where if it's non-essential travel, it might be worth delaying it till there's um, a better um, idea. We learn more about this virus. Yeah, we need to learn more. Everything is uh, uncertain. So The Economist has said there are more deaths by coronavirus now than anything else at the moment globally. So another practical issue, you know, everybody has little issues in their homes, problems, etc. Should they allow people like carpenters, plumbers, electricians to enter and leave uh, their homes, come in and go out? If it's urgent, then I think just again taking caution. So making sure that people coming in have masks, that shoes are left outside, that hands are washed and surfaces are disinfected from where um, others might have been. I think taking precautions is the way to go. So how do you disinfect an area where somebody's been? Uh, carpenters come, but he's touched many surfaces. So how do you disinfect surfaces? 
Well, you can use a soap, soap and water. And let's say you have someone who's been working in your in your bathroom, you just wash down with quickly soap any surfaces that have been touched. Uh, and then if you have a window, you can open the window and air as well. Um, so these are the kind of measures to take. Right. Uh, it's now, is it okay to send clothes out to somebody to be washed or to be ironed by somebody else? Yes, I think that's fine as long as when they come back that you leave them to air for a, a day or so and make sure that when you're unwrapping them or you're taking off the packet, you put that directly into, um, into the bin, into the garbage and wash your hands. Right. Um, and when you, when you get them back, you don't use them for a day at all, right? Yeah, that's just to be safe. Right. Now, here's another issue that I, I, I desperately want to help a friend or a relative who's got COVID-19. How can I help them? the first thing to do is to make sure you call them, reach out to them, because just if they're isolating physically, you can still socially uh, make sure that they're feeling fine and not too lonely. Also make sure you could help with groceries, any medications they need, helping with any responsibilities they have in terms of caring responsibilities to their, to their kids. So in New Zealand, they've called this a bubble that every community, um, every neighborhood should have a bubble where we all look out for each other and take care of those who are having COVID and what burden they might be feeling that is lifted by the others in the community. That's important. A bubble is a very important. Coming to the very last uh, bit, how can, is it, is it possible that children can infect adults? A children generally are less susceptible to this virus, but can they be carriers and uh, give it to adults? So we do know that children carry the virus. There was a German study that looked at the viral load and found children carry the same viral load as adults. What we're less clear on is how they can transmit to adults. There's much less research on that. So we don't yet know the degree of transmission from children to adults. So given the research, is it better to be safe now? Yes, I think so. I think we should assume that reasonably kids can transmit this virus to adults and just to, to be cautious and ch children thankfully have very mild symptoms or no symptoms at all okay sorry we've we've taken a lot of picture of brains a lot finally if a person wants to be tested and they're worried that going to a hospital for testing there may be queues and crowds and they may come into contact with others who have got the virus and you know may or may not get it how can a person be tested safely? Well, again, I think there's different in innovations being tried. So in, um, in the UK, they're doing phone. You can book your, have your booking by phone or by the website, and they give you a time slot, and you try to go to that time slot, and they are trying to distance people. So I think it really depends on the exact system that's being used in each state for testing. But yes, the most important thing is to make sure that people do not go to testing stations and pick up the virus while they're there. So thinking of actually booking people in for different appointments and spacing them, and so the swabbing can be done in a way that keeps people separate. And South Korea has shown the way that this can be done through phone booths, drive-throughs, walk-through stations, different innovations to try to keep testing as safe as possible. Right. These are really, really important, important lessons, uh, listening to all that you've said. Uh, wonderful practical solutions based on all your research and knowledge. And yes, there are a lot of uncertainties and your bottom line is do be cautious. Thank you very, very much for joining us. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me, Dr. Roy. It's a pleasure.